And this one's asking us a little bit about after Deadpool 3, how are they going to handle Wolverine? Check. Hey, Mr. Campia. This is Steve from Louisiana calling with a question. I was wondering, I know we're getting Deadpool, we're getting Wolverine together in a movie finally, and it's going to be rated R. So when we do get our new Wolverine in the MCU, will he be rated R or will he be nerfed? I just wanted to ask you that question. All right, thanks a lot for calling that in from Louisiana, man. And this is a very, very interesting one because one of the topics a lot of fans want to bring up all the time is, is bringing rated R into the MCU. Kevin Feige has been very unambiguous and very direct in saying the MCU is not doing rated R stuff other than Deadpool. I mean, he's, he's been very clear about that. Now, Kevin Feige is a human being. He can also change his mind or have a change of heart or whatever. Hard to imagine that now that Big Papa Iger is back in charge. So uh, whatever. So we've been asking, a lot of people asking about Blade. Kevin Feige seemed to directly address the Blade thing, says only Deadpool's going to be rated R. Ball. But, but here's an interesting thing. We've talked about how one of the challenges Marvel is going to face is how do you handle Deadpool if you introduce him in his own R-rated films in the MCU and then have him in anything other than a Deadpool movie where he's suddenly censored and suddenly does not swear and suddenly does not have the sensibilities that he has. But what I have not thought about that our caller brings up, and I think it's a really interesting question. Look, if you're reintroducing Wolverine, now granted, it's going to be a different Wolverine because this is the Hugh Jackman Wolverine that we're getting in Deadpool 3. But still, if you're bringing Wolverine into the MCU in Deadpool 3, and that is going to be an R-rated movie, how, even though it's going to be a new version and a different actor, how do you approach now bringing Wolverine uh, the new Wolverine, whoever the brand new Wolverine is going to be into the MCU, the MCU's Wolverine moving forward, how do you now bring that character in, not rated R, when you just had a version of Wolverine that was probably going to be very rated R? And how do you do that without major, major obstacles? I would propose that there is no way to do it without major obstacles. There, there's going to be some challenges they have, some per perception ideas. But I would also say this. We have had, look, Hugh Jackman became a fan favorite long before the R-rated Logan movie came out. Yeah. And especially if you go back to like Days of Future Past, Wolverine has been very, very violent in, in a number of movies and it, they didn't have to be rated R. There's ways to show his visceral violence without necessarily being rated R. So that's not the hard part. I don't think the hard part is now dealing with expectations because we're going to see a Hugh Jackman Wolverine in Deadpool 3 that I'm not going to be surprised to see him schnick somebody in the gut and then as he pulls his claws out there are intestines hanging off his oh, I, yeah. I'm just saying I I would not I would not put it past him to do that in a Deadpool movie but then how do you go back say to a days of future past style Wolverine where it's, it's not so rated R honestly I do not think they're going to have Wolverine be rated R and I don't think they necessarily have to nerf him because he's been quite violent before but I'm not going to pretend like it's not going to be a challenge but at the end of the day I don't think they make Wolverine rated R after this. Anyway, Rob, what do you think they're going to handle? They're going to do about this? I think you're pretty right about that because, look, Deadpool is not just rated R because of violence. It's also language. It's sexual innuendo. There's there's all these things that you're not going to find in an X-Men movie anyway. And the one thing about Wolverine that makes him is because he has bladed. He's got his adamantium blade, so the way he takes dudes out is violent. So it's hard. But, look... Like in X-Men 2 when he's fighting Lady Deathstrike. That's a really cool fight. That's a great fight. fight. I like great, that fight. Great yeah. fight. And, and I think a lot of the violence in X-Men movies is fantasy violence. So they can get away. When Wolverine's fighting other mutants or fighting monsters or fighting other characters, he can get away with being a little bit more violent because it's not real. You know, he's fighting fantasy characters. And I don't think, you know, I don't, I would not like a movie where Wolverine is using a bunch of bad language, a lot of F-bombs and stuff. It it would feel out of place. Um, I mean, you could throw a few in, I guess, but I don't think a Wolverine movie that's PG or PG-13 has to be compromised because of anything. I mean, I, I, I the character is the character. He's a great character. He doesn't have to be blood-soaked in order for him to work. There's as much... There's as much pathos and history in his character as there is just when he rocks and rolls as a fighter. 
So I think you could easily get away with it, like you said, without nerfing the character. Because I think, you know, it, it's – he. we saw him – in, in X-Men 1, he's got that opening scene when you first meet him. He's cage fighting. It's brutal. Yeah. But it doesn't hurt his character. It's still, that was still PG, I think, PG-13. And I loved Wolverine in that first movie when Q Jackman is introduced. He's great. Yeah. What do they call you, wheels? <laughs> All right, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? Like, we're going to get Wolverine now into Marvel, but the first introduction is going to be Hugh Jackman's Wolverine in a very R-rated Deadpool movie. So then how are they going to manage the new Wolverine moving out of that and moving him back into PG-13? Or do you think Kevin Feige will change direction here and let Wolverine? But then if you let Wolverine be rated R, what do you do with the rest of the X-Men? Can you have Wolverine? I don't know. There's a lot of different you know obstacles to overcome here. Whatever you think they're going to do, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. You guys know I made the switch over to Mint Mobile a while ago. The process couldn't have been easier and I can't believe that I am spending less than a third of what I was spending on one of the other major carriers before. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia that's mintmobile.com slash campia cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia